Hello again, I'm Dr. Brian Holsey of uh, Foundations Chiropractic in Corvallis, Oregon. Again, I'm a board eligible um, in clinical nutrition, have well over 300 hours in uh, functional nutrition courses, trying to figure out how the body's functioning from the inside out and now how we uh, repair that or uh, uh, fix those dysfunctions. So when, uh, in our first video in this series, we, we discussed intestinal permeability very quickly how uh, undigested food can now cause damage to our spot welds in our villi. Those, villi, those spot welds in, in the intestinal cells can open up and now the undigested food is getting in and possibly aggravating the immune system. So we're going to take that a step further here right now and talk about what happens next when the immune system uh, starts recognizing things are breaking through the barrier. Again, think of a burglar breaking through, uh, breaking into your house. The alarms go off. You, the, everybody's on high alert because something has broken through that wall, that protective wall there. So uh, we're, we're going to start with this antigen presenting cell. So again, this is our APC that we learned last time. So antigen presenting cell is what APC stands for. This is going to gobble up those undigested food particles or these foreign invaders, possibly lipopolysaccharide, bacteria, parasites. Something sets this guy off. This guy now sends out screams for help here. These screams for help are called cytokines. So this is now going to our, uh, our helper T cell. Our helper T cell who now calls in for reinforcements. So this guy and sends that over there. So when this happens, we have a Th1 side of things, Th1 and Th2. To put it simply, our Th1 is our, our cellular hitman and our SWAT team. So this goes in and actually does the destruction of the infected cell or the, the pathogen. It, it'll gobble it up, house it off, and you know, kill it with uh, toxic substances such as uh, hydrogen peroxide, uh, superoxide dismutase. So a lot of powerful enzymes to help break that down. So, so again, this is our this is our SWAT team, but it also sends out signals to our surveillance team over here. So our surveillance team is now on the lookout for anything and everything that looks like what has broken through our barrier. So again, remember that burglar scenario, this guy's on high alert here. The SWAT team goes in and kills it, and the surveillance team is now on high alert for anything that looks like that. So what should happen in a typical infection is an antigen presenting cell says, hey, things are going haywire, that they send out screens for help from cytokines, our Th1 side of things, our SWAT team comes in and tries to wall off the infection, our surveillance team then says, hey, be on the lookout for this guy in the future. So this uh, surveillance team produces the antibodies. So these are our B lymphocytes over here, and our Th1 side of things are our natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells. So they, they sound like, uh, uh, they sound like uh, big aggressive guys. Think of these as our, again, SWAT team, our Navy SEALs. So they're very powerful in trying to knock, knock out infections or invaders or uh, a foreign substance called an antigen. So th this surveillance team is on high alert now. The B lymphocytes are turning out these things called antibodies. So now the next part of the story, when the, the body recognizes that the infection is done, we have this Th3 guy or our, a regulatory T cell So regulatory T cell here. That guy's job is to say, hey, the infection's gone, everybody calm down. I'm 
going to put this guy here. So it, it tells, when everything's working right, it tells body when infection is done. So the few things that it needs to help stabilize that are vitamin D, antioxidants, and essential fats or fatty acids here. So we need to check for vitamin D. So antioxidants such as uh, glutathione and um, other antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, those can all help essential fats. So that helps to stabilize our Th3 cell. So that this side doesn't go haywire. However, if we have a stressful episode, this infection, it's a nasty infection, doesn't seem to go away. Um, we have, again, a stressful episode. We can deplete our stores of vitamin D and antioxidants, and typically we're not getting enough essential good fats in our diet. So that can throw off our Th3 system. So the next step in this, when the Th3 cells aren't stabilized, our regulatory T cells aren't stabilized, is we can get a teeter-totter effect here. So I'm going to go with, with red here. say it stays and this is called immune dominance here so what can happen is our, our th1 system is going overboard now the SWAT team is going after pretty much everything so the surveillance team helps with targeting cells and tissue and items that are thought of as bad again thought of as antigens but now this Th1 system can go blindly and start destroying our own tissue. So that's some of the way autoimmunity starts. The other, we can also get a, a light, otherwise scenario going the opposite direction when we have the Th2 system being overactive. Now we're tagging things that shouldn't be tagged. And then the immune system goes in and attacks it. Or the Th1 side of things goes in and attacks it. Remember, the Th2 side of things produces antibodies. We do have natural turnover of our tissue, so of our thyroid, of bone, of brain, and then that tissue should be rebuilt faster than it's being broken down. When it's being broken down faster than it's being rebuilt, that's when we have a term called autoimmunity. So this can lead to uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Some people are saying fibromyalgia. Most thyroid issues, especially low-functioning thyroid, are uh, autoimmune in nature. So autoimmune conditions are the third most uh, common cause of morbidity and mortality in the United States. But immune dysfunction also plays into our number two, one and two killers, heart disease and cancer. So you know, those are for future topics here. But again, I just want to give, give an overview of what's going on with the immune system. So when one of these is dominant, it can shut down the other side. So a lot of people that I work with, we test for antibodies to certain tissues, especially thyroid. So a lot of times I see thyroid the antibodies coming back negative. That's because they can have an overzealous Th1 side of things that doesn't allow for the Th2 expression of antibodies. This is getting pretty complex. So the, what now happens is that we also have more screams for help here. So when this is unbalanced, we have decreased vitamin D, decreased essential fats, decreased antioxidants. We now start activating this TH17 system. So this is our elite, elite Navy SEAL gone rogue here. So it's, it causes a lot of our tissue destruction and inflammation with, with this guy. So it's essential to balance out the, the immune system process regulate the Th3 system so that it's more stable and this is going to bring better balance to it just like we saw previously at the beginning part of the video. So the, our overall goal 
is to get a good balance our blue line there. But either system, either dominance, now screen gives rise to uh, more cytokines and screams for help. This Th17 system is being uh, overzealous and now going in and breaking down tissue. And some of the reason it does this is by way of um, interleukin 17, and this causes increased production of inducible nitric oxide synthase. This inducible nitric oxide synthase again tells the cell to take itself out of commission, take it itself out of the picture. There. So we, we get increased inducible nitric oxide synthase and decreased endothelial nitric oxide synthase and neurogenic nitric oxide synthase. So we have decreased ability for the, the, the cells to function as they should. So the inducible nitric oxide synthase helps increase blood flow to areas and then neurogenic nitric oxide synthase is, is our nerve cells sending out these feelers. So if we're decreasing the ability to do this and we're increasing inflammation, then that's going to promote cell destruction and cell death there. So what So I don't want to complicate things too much, probably already have, but what I want to do, so to balance out TH3, we need to look at vitamin D again. We need to look at um, antioxidant status, and we need to look at uh, essential fats, essential fatty acids. So this comes from, this comes from diet. The most potent antioxidant in the body is glutathione. So glutathione helps quench that oxidative stress. Think of this as the, the brave soldier that takes a grenade for the, the rest of the, his troop. So the, again, we can deplete that glutathione stores, and that's going to drastically affect liver function and its ability to detox as well. So we want to keep a, a good store of glutathione. Essential fats can come from diet. The typical SAD or standard American diet has many more omega-6s, pro-inflammatory, think of fire, pro-inflammatory fatty acids than it does omega-3s. So balancing that out and also taking out the inflammatory foods that you may be reacting to, the most common ones are gluten, dairy, soy, egg, corn, peanuts can be up there, but we want to test specifically for what foods may be uh, triggering your immune response.